Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you always because you a Lord of God. We thank you because you are sovereign. We thank you because you've never made a mistake. And so even in times when it's difficult, even in times when it's hard even to say thank you Lord, we can still lift our voices and give you thanks and give you praise. We thank you for the gift of life that you've given to us. 
We thank you, O oh God, for your word that reminds us that our time here on earth is limited and uh, you invite us to live for you in such a way so that uh, when our time comes, O oh God, Lord, we can rejoice in the fact that we have enjoyed a long and precious life. God, today, even as we gather here today at the passing of Mr. Francis Frederick, I pray, O oh God, for the grieving relatives at this time. I pray that they will find comfort in you. I pray that even at this time, O oh God, they are going to be drawn closer to each other as they support each other, as they comfort each other. In the name of Jesus, I find, I pray, O oh God, that even at this time, they will look to you, who alone gives strength, who alone is able to comfort us yes. in our difficult moments. So be glorified and as we commit today's proceedings into your hand. Yes, we pray that everything that is done today will be done for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' precious name. This time I'm going to sing, take the name of Jesus with you.
Pass me not, O gentle Savior.
Those words are a fitting tribute to my brother. For we accept that death is inevitable. We also accept we know not the day nor the hour. Despite that acceptance, it does not diminish the pain felt after the loss of a loved one. Francis was born on September 21st, 1949 to Nathaniel and Bernard Frederick, both deceased. He was adopted by Botelia Smith, my mother's niece. Upon her untimely death at a young age, Francis was raised by her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Innocent Smith, and became their adopted son. Francis, better known by his friends as King Farai, a member of the Rast Rastafarian sect in Anstory, was a musician, former policeman, businessman, an avid politician, and an aspiring farmer at the time of his passing. Who else in our family was so gifted and so many talents, yet he never took advantage of many opportunities available to him? The Francis I remember was fearless and is the only sibling that took on my father when the rest of us were too timid to express ourselves. My father was an apologetic authoritarian as it was in his generation. Francis had a great sense of humor and would poke fun at my father's belly to the amusement of us all. My father never cherished his younger son's enjoyment of such privileges. Of course, Francis did it from a safe distance. He often took refuge from his adopted home whenever he finished trace, tracing off my father or mother and laid low for a week or two before resurfacing. The ironic country and western singer Johnny Cash had a rendition of the song entitled Patrolman, where he related how, not how the misfortunes of his brother Frankie affected him as a law enforcement officer. That song reminds me of the plight of my two older brothers as senior law enforcement officers who had to deal with misgivings of their younger brother. He ended by admitting that blood on blood forced him to look the other way. Looking back, we do not agree on most things, and over the sweep of our historical development, both of us chose different pathways, and there we we are both victims of our own destiny. My sister Marcel, the matriarch of the family, loved and cared for him like the biblical version of the prodigal son. But not even that would hinder him from administering a stinging tongue lashing whenever he did not get his way, only to return the following day in atonement and would be fed like nothing had been the day before. As a doctor, I knew only too well the prognosis was stage for colon cancer, but had great difficulty in answering when he asked me about the chances of his recovery. The Saturday before, the Saturday before his passing, I called and spoke to him whilst his son Jabez was holding the phone. He spoke in a dull set tone, very audible. His words were measured and speech slurred, slurred as if he had resigned to his fate. The news of his passing was no surprise and I took comfort in the fact that he could suffer no more and remember the words of the late former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Sir Winston Churchill, on the day of his friend, on the death of his friend, and I quote, every time someone dies and leaves us, it diminish, diminishes all of us. My dear brother Francis, Marcel and Bernstein provided you with the best care one could ask for, and I wish I could have come home. I know you meet and fellowship with those loved ones who predeceased you as you come face to face with God in the Holy Kingdom. God good, my brother. And to this I must add that Francis was a, was a special brother. Of course, all of us have a choice. The way we live, we choose, the path we choose, but they also have consequences to our choices. My mother had, we had a theoretical big family, and those days, there were good days, as families have their struggles, we had our struggles, but I just found that I look back, I can recall my father being the entertainer of the family. In those days, we didn't have all the entertainment we have, like television. So as I was growing up as a young child, I think television came up on the pitch in the scene. My father used to sing and entertain us at night and we would roll with laughter. 
And I thank God for those past years that I can reflect of a family growing up together. We had a large family, and I thank God for whatever discipline that was given to us that we can tell we will be able to make good use of it. But what I remember with Francis, we had brought up in two homes. When I reflect, I say maybe that is why he made, took, chose the path that he took. I think he lacked discipline in the fact that when my mother and father were trying to correct him, he would run for refuge at his adopted um, family, where we were next door neighbors. And so he used to escape with some stuff, right? And I think, I'm thinking, but how come all of us were disciplined? And why this one seemed to have escaped? But there was a way of escape for him because my grand uncle's wife, even when my mother was correcting him, beating him, she would come in the midst and say, and she used to come as though she wanted to take the leads for him. So I think that was his means of escaping. And he grew up like a little prince. And so I think from that, he made some choices that was not very good for him. was not good for him. But to all in all, I know that God did a okay his life. From last year when he fell sick and called for help. When I went to, when I assisted him at the hospital, somehow I think God gave me a special bond for my brother. I was feeling so sorry for him when I saw him on casual discipline on that chair waiting with pain. I had to try to go and negotiate with the master, the little doctor, telling him the patient gave me so much pain, what I was doing for him. And I think I left off the land at about maybe about one o'clock in the morning. And from that the episode started. And I tell you, the journey has not been an easy one for my sister and myself. And those of us in the family like knows what was going on. I know what was going on. But what really um, inspired me with him, when he told me, two years, when he fell sick, and I was with him at the hospital, and he told me that it's two months since God took out the desire for smoking, drinking, and for sex. He just don't have the desire again. When I heard my brother said so, I said to myself, you need to tell me my prayer is answered since two months ago, and I didn't even know that, that I was praying every day for my brother, for his salvation, for the demon, for my addiction, praying for his son. And I, I tell you, when he told me so, I felt so released. And that was how I was going to a little stronger. Because when I used to, early in the morning, when I was to have a good conversation, Bible conversation, and he was the one that reminded me, I knew that scripture for so long. And it's when Francis related to me, because Jesus and God, you must have that conversation. And Christ told God, you must accept a man, be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he explained, the Lord and Christ said, accept a man, be born again of water and of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I saw that if one is to see, one is to enter. And I realized, that was so vital, and I said, oh, I never really saw it that way. Right? And he knew the word, and he dedicated his life back to God. He told me, what I ask God's forgiveness, and what I do now is the Holy Spirit. Of course, there are some rough edges that God had to really send people for him, even during his illness. But as I, I, I can say that God is still working on me, so I can say I cannot try to condemn him and think I'm so much better than him. Once you come to Christ in true repentance, that is what he paid the price for. He died that we can have forgiveness of our sins. He didn't come for the righteous, he came for the sinner. And we are all sinners, we all need his forgiveness, we all need to repent, and heaven can be our home. And the consolation I have today, because my brother made it, he turned back to God, and he suffered, he went through some real serious times, but I think that was a time of purging for him. And I feel with that, God gives us the grace, and this reminds me that one day I too have to give this word. I have to live my life for the glory of God. When I look at him, I take him as an example that I will not make the same mistakes, but I will be I will be steadfast in my journey with God. I don't want to wait when it, when I, I want when I reach in the presence of God, I have I have a crown to cast at his feet that I can worship him with. So I just give God praise for all what he has done. Even I mean that is not anything that we are we, we, we are used to. But you have to face the reality, right? And when I saw the way he was suffering at the hospital, this last time he was readmitted, 
and you're already crying for help and saying, God have mercy, God have mercy, God have mercy, you have a problem passing you in. And I, although I mentioned it in the most, but for some reason I don't know the next day from the bottom of the skin on. Eventually you will have to. But you really cry out for mercy, even at the last moment. So I have that hope that I will see my brother in the name of Jesus as long well as I live to the glory of God. And I trust that this afternoon all of us have that same hope and we all prepare to meet our God. This is what I want to share. At this time, we're going to have the first reading by Alison Phillips. The reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. Ye shall, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death! Where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The second reading is taken from First Thessalonians chapter four, verses thirteen to eighteen. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. At this time, I've got Jabez Frederick, Francis' son, to say something on the Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, I'd just like to say that my father was a very loving person, very kind person. He would love to share. He would always tell me to always pray to the Lord Jesus Christ and have my faith in the Lord. And you'd always tell me to try my best to always behave myself and do good so that good would always come back to me. But I would like to say that my father, I really loved him. Before my heart, he was the only friend I had. He was the only father I had. And sad to say that it's so sad that he's gone so soon. And I'm really feeling the sorrow and the pain in my heart. 
that words can't even explain. But I hope that God has a place for him in heaven and a most and a merciful God will make sure that his soul will have a place in heaven, Father. But I would only like to say I don't even know what to say anymore. It's kind of even explain what I have to say. But thank you, Lord, that you delivered him from his pain and suffering that he went through for the past days of his life. I saw him every day and it wasn't it wasn't looking too good with him. And I just want to thank the Lord that he's in a better place now. Amen. Thank you. Yes. We have another congregational song, Oh Lord My God. That was a song he said he played for um, when he was playing his music for tourists. He met with two or three um, tourists that when he called one's maid, they were so amazed. How this bastard man knows my name? Then they had a conversation only to know that their parents were missionaries from America that were riding in St. Lucia and came to us where we preach the gospel and my family turned to Christ. And I think from that thing, that when you told me that story, I realized God was doing a work. After so many years, I cannot even well count the month. So many years, I was thinking I was about nine years. When I, the, the missionaries came and I heard the gospel message, I gave my life to Christ. And after all those years, for Francis to encounter with their children and to make a connection, and he played that song for them, and they were so free. They bought something from him, and he said they gave him a, one of those elastic bands with some symbols. And he explained to me, I wanted to tell you what those symbols mean. One line, he picking that when Christ came to this earth with one as a baby. The second one, he picks that when he died on the cross. The third one, the symbol um, reminds of his burial. And then the other line reminds him of his resurrection. And then he has ascended to heaven and he's coming back. When he told me so, I was so blessed. I said, that's a gospel message right there in that thing. And they gave it to him. And this boy, this man appreciated that so much that with all this episode on the ventilator in ICU, emergency surgery, I said, I wonder if he still have this thing on his arm. You know, to my amaze, he had it still. He said, I wonder if I'm going to I said, no, 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 go take it out, go take it out. And he died with that thing, you know. I said, that was, uh, I think God was just sealing this young man to get his attention, to bring him back to himself. So I said, I said I was I must sing that song in his room. Oh Lord my God, I don't remind you. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the words my hand have made.
But every time you, you we, we got to tell a funeral, you know, it has to be about death. So there are lots of things that is said about death. The scripture gives many things about death. But death is inevitable, it is, it is sure. It is inevitable. It is sure. Death is sure. Ecclesiastes says, for the living know that they will die. Every one of us know that one day we will die. Why would God create such wonderful people where he said that in scripture that we were fearfully and wonderfully made? We were well thought of. We were, we were God's concept, God's idea. He thought about us. He thought about you. He knew you in your mother's womb before you were in your mother's womb. He thought about me. But we all, in our own ways, choose to go differently. Because of one man, the scripture says, because of one man seen the enter into the world, and that is our God, that is Adam. But God, it is so, he's so loving. So loving that he never give up on us like we, as one another, we give up on each other. He never gives up on us. We as humans, it's only when things are nice, we dare, we support each other. When things are nice, but when things become worse and worse, and we see that we are not getting any benefits from that individual, if our own selfish ways, any benefit, we'll get back from this individual and we go to seek for somebody else that somebody can please us. But our God is so loving. In spite of how far you move away from Him, He said in His words that even while you were dead in your trespasses, He demonstrated His love for us and God loves us. I am talking, I'm not talking about the love that man has toward each other. I'm talking about a love that is unconditional. In spite of what you say about God, He loves you. In spite of how much that you do not believe in him, how much you renounce his name, how much you make mockery of him, but yet he's lost you. And he still follows you on the outer door. Whenever you call upon him, he's right there. And that is the most wonderful thing about God. And that's why I made a decision to, to continue to love him and to accept him as my Lord and Savior because I know what he has done in my life. I remember when I was out there and how my life was. Live all my life doing all kind of messed up things because that's the way the world have fashioned me and have grafted me and have shaped me as the scripture says what? That our life has been shaped in iniquity. Huh? Yes, I was like that. But the scripture says, you know, we all have seen and for short of the glory of God. He also said that there is none righteous. Yeah? There is none righteous. There is none. So I cannot take point on you or judge you and say that I am better than you. Because on the earth, under the sun, we all have seen and we are falling short. When I say we are falling short, we are falling short of the glory of God. We, the world, we are the world God is speaking about. We are falling short. Our ways of doing good or our conduct in doing good, it is very inconsistent. Sometimes you do good. And sometimes when people say all kinds of things to offend you and, to, and they offend you, you choose to say, you see me, I'm tired of treating this individual the way, you know. So, 
So we fall in short because we are inconsistent, because we move away from our Creator. We move away from our source. And I know there are just a few people out here hearing me, but I know for sure there are plenty of people on YouTube, am I, am I correct? On YouTube listening to what I'm saying. Yes, we all have drifted away from God and we have fallen short. And God is the only answer to restore our broken hearted because our broken heart. Because we have messed up. We are like sheep that have gone astray and we have turned everyone to their own way. We have hurt each other, people. I have hurt so many people because I want to include myself because I want to let you know that. Because some of us believe that, you know, as if we never done anything wrong. I I was one that was destroying lives as well. I have messed around. I have failed. Had it not been for Jesus, I would still be hurting people. We all have seen and fall short of the glory of God because we have moved away from the Creator, from the source. Just like in the beginning, Adam disobeyed God. And because of his disobedience, there comes a separation. And that same system governed the entire world because separation and separation. So then now you have separation in the family. You have separation in the schools. You have separation in the workplace. You have separation even in your mind because sometimes we don't even know where we are. Hey, Amen. Separation everywhere. Not just separation, division. Then now, here is something that is right before us, which is the COVID-19, the virus. Then now there is a lot of separation going on. Hmm? A lot of separation. And all because of sin. And I heard my sisters and read the scripture. The sting of death is sin. It creates separation. Separation upon separation. You have no control over it because of right now you are going to be separated from your Brother. From your family, the one that you knew all your life. You are right now, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting so passionate. You are right now separated from him. Yes, I have seen persons try to glue to the one that they love you not to die when uh, they're about to put this individual, their the family in the in the in the coffin. Not in the coffin, in the, in the tomb. You know, they, they cry and they cry and they cry, and people have to hold them. But you cannot stop that separation. You cannot stop it. Because death is sure. At this moment, we are in the land of the living, and now we have to be concerned about what is next. How do I take stock of my life? How do I be accountable of what I do next? Because we have done wrong. My advice to you, to us, is to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Because He is the resurrection in our lives. Hmm? He is the resurrection and the life. My advice to you is to call upon Him. Accept Him as your personal Savior. Repent from your sin. Because there's a scripture that says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with your what? With your mouth confession is being made. So you must confess because you have, you have come from within. Confession and with your heart man believe unto righteousness. So you are saying now that I am willing to turn away from my own ways and allow God to take over my life that I can walk in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The only way that you and I can live right is through Jesus Christ. Because he demonstrated on the earth how that 
he was able to leave among men that are so hostile. And yet the Bible said he knew no sin. Among hostile people. He was able to go through the cross. The same people that he was with ministering to. The same people that he came for. And he came to love so much. Yet the same people crucified him. And yet he made a statement. He says, forgive them Lord. They don't know what they have done. Forgiveness is one of the, one of the, most, the most powerful things that you can ever experience. Forgiveness brings people together. Just like death brings people together. Forgiveness. And he said, a, he said a wonderful prayer when he teaches his disciples how to pray. He said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I think today they need to have another forgiveness in the land today because we have been hurting one another. We, are hurting, we have been hurting our children. And when we hurt our children, that means you're hurting a generation that is coming because you're going to leave. But there's a generation that is to come. And if you do not exercise the power of forgiveness, the power of rest restoration and reconciliation, then now you have a family that is corrupt. And they're going to remain corrupt. They're going to remain hurt because they learn what unforgiveness is all about. That's what they see in their family. But now that you have a new life, time to make a change. Time to turn around and repent. And call upon the name of the Lord. And when you are saved, your family is going to be saved because people watch your ways. They watch. As a pastor, they watch how I do things. They watch me when I'm walking. They watch how I live with my children. They watch everything because I'm I am a pastor. But not just a pastor. People watch leaders and they watch the every move. They watch the every move. They watch because they learn from your condom. What character that you're portraying? Are you portraying the character of God? Or are you portraying, portraying something that is not of God? So we all have fallen short. But I have good news for you. The Bible said, Blessed are they that die for the Lord. I believe Mr. 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 Francis made a decision to accept Jesus Christ as, a, as his personal savior. I do not know Mr. Francis. But I can recall meeting him just for about an hour or two at the Owen King Hospital. And I came to minister to Mr. Francis as a pastor. You go to minister. You know, I am at your service. So that thing I go to minister prayer, you know, and minister the word to him and introduce Jesus Christ to Mr. Frederick. Huh? Am I correct? Is it Mr. Frederick? Yeah. Yes. So I go, I go to minister to Mr. Fedry, a Rastafarian. So I have that perception. Yes, this is a Rastafarian. I go to minister. I did not have the opportunity, the opportunity to do so because I was ministered to. I was ministered to, just like he ministered the, um, to this young man. This man was scriptures more than I do. And I sat there listening to this man. I said, yes, this man is born. <laughs> He's a born again believer. I saw a change in this individual. I saw tears running out of his face because he realized that he's born again and he's experiencing that new birth. He experienced that new birth. He experienced that joy. It's not about how much life you live, you know. But it's about how much time you take to recognize Jesus Christ as Lord. To take the time to acknowledge Him, recognize Him all your past sins, all what you have done. 
and you are ashamed about it, and you're tired of living that kind of life, don't you feel tired of seeing what is going on all around you? Don't you feel tired? I don't know about you, but I am tired. I try to live a godly life, but when I look what's going on, even in my neighbors, my surroundings, don't you feel tired? When you hear the way the politicians, our leaders, are speaking to each other, don't you feel tired and frustrated? Huh? The way they talk down on each other and ridicule each other, don't you feel tired? Huh? The way that they, what they use in the media, huh? on Facebook, and say all kinds of things to tarnish each other's name. Hmm? The people that God calls so precious, so wonderful, and we are just hurting each other like this. Now is the time for us to acknowledge Jesus Christ and turn from our ways. Turn from our wicked ways and call upon Jesus. And let me tell you, he shall no wise turn you away because if your heart is genuine, if your heart is broken and it is contrite, God will come to you faster than, faster than the speed of light. So this is what I need to say to just want to exhort you. Because I'm realizing there's a time, we, the, the time that we are in, the gospel now is being kind of watered down and depreciated. But let me let you know, it's not, this is not so. People are making a mockery of themselves. But I will stand and tell you that Jesus Christ remains Lord. And he's coming again. He's coming again. Whether you prepare or not, he's coming again. And this I want to tell you. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that is knocking the hearts of those that hear your word. I thank you, Lord, my God, your word declares that the only way somebody will come to you it is when the Spirit draws in. Father, we are on the airwaves. Let your Holy Spirit draw men to you. Let your Holy Spirit draw men to you. But all those that are weak, all those that are tired of carrying the load, the heavy load that is so unbearable, let them call upon you, O God. Those that are, those that are, that are, that are in pain, that don't know what else to do with their life, Lord. Father, may you touch them now by the power of your Holy Spirit. Let them realize, my God, today that you're going to be the shepherd and they will want nothing else but only you. Let them realize even when they walk through the shadow, valley of shadow of death, they will fear no evil because they know that you are with them. And your rod and your staff will comfort them. And Lord, I remember your word says that you are the present help in the time of trouble. Father, we are in trouble. So we call upon you, and I pray on behalf of our nation right now, that they call upon you, O God, in, in the situation and in the, the, the dilemma and in the pandemic that we are in. Father, Save us with your multitudes of mercy. Come into our hearts, Lord. Save our nation. Save our nation, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Lance. And God for his word. May the Holy Spirit bring about his purpose and glory.
at this time, as we are going to have the signing of the register, um, I don't know how it is. They have to render special and then they have to sign. But that I sign after I finish the special. And we call on James Frederick, Alison Phoenix, and McDonald, and also myself. It's the witnesses signing the register.
Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, your grace. Lord, we thank you, Father, for everyone that made it possible to be here. We thank you for your word that has established in our hearts and minds and our spirit, Lord. But as we're about to go to the other segment of the service, Lord, to the burial ground, we pray for your many mercies. And as always, Father, we ask you to, to comfort us you know, as we journey to reach the, this place, Father. May you strengthen us at this time. May you strengthen the family. I go, they really need your strength today. Strengthen everyone, my God. May you protect us and guide us every step of the way.